He walked toward the craft, looking through his binoculars. He claimed to have seen 8 to 11 humanoid figures peering at him through the craft's windows. Welcome, listeners. I'm the one known as Cool Josh. We're currently living in the end of times, so why not tell some spooky stories and ride this ship till it sinks? That's the motto here at Off Brand Horror, and today is no different. Today, we will hear the story about the alien abduction of Barney and Betty Hill. Then, we will get into the prison planet theory. Could this explain not only where we came from as the human species, but also explain what exactly UFOs are? Stay tuned. So when your kids ask you, Mom, Dad, can we stop for scary stories? You can tell them we have scary stories at home. Welcome to Off Brand Horror. Good afternoon or good evening. You are listening to Off Brand Horror. I'm Kristen. And I'm Josh. And today's episode is the Hill Abduction, which is an alien abduction of a couple in 1961. Ah, a couple. Yes. In 1961. And they had their dog with them, but I don't think the dog got abducted. Interesting. (laughs) All right. Uh, plenty of alien abduction stories we have told in our time uh, and on Terraform more Podcast. And we have not even touched on. And yeah, digging into this alien subject again. We're <laughs> so much out there. So much out there. So expect plenty more alien content to come. But uh, I've never heard this story, the Hill Abduction, so I'm excited. Uh, it was, I believe, the first uh, abduction that was popularized. Like, um, you know, it became famous. Oh, really? Yeah. So, Barney, 39 at the time, and Betty Hill, 42, were an interracial couple living in Portsmouth, New Hampshire in 1961. Barney was a night shift United States postal worker, and Betty was a child welfare social worker. Outside of work, the free time they did have was spent in their church community and activities related to the civil rights movement. They attended a Unitarian congregation and were members of the NAACP. Barney sat on a local board of the United States Commission on Civil Rights. Barney decided the couple should take a road trip through Montreal and Niagara Falls as a much needed break from their very busy lives. The decision was made so hastily that they had no time to make preparations and set off with just $70 in their pockets. And you know, like at this time, like debit cards weren't a thing or anything, Mm -hmm. so that's the money they went on their trip with, that that's all they had. Dang. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, they were very busy people, and they kind of had stressful jobs and, you know, not too much time to themselves. So, mm-hmm. you know, they wanted to make a little trip to kind of, you know, get back to each other and right. have a little break. Yeah. So, on the last day of their trip, September 19th, they decided to drive through the night to beat an approaching storm. They stopped at a diner in Vermont to get some coffee and recharge. They left the diner around 10 p.m. and hoped to get home around 2 or 3 in the morning. Roughly 30 minutes later, while they were on the road, Betty spotted a bright light in the sky. At first she thought it was a shooting star, but it began to move erratically, then appeared to get bigger and brighter as if it was getting closer to them. Barney speculated it was just a satellite that went off course and was nothing to worry about, but as they drove, the light seemed to move with the car. They decided to stop at a roadside picnic area to let their dog walk around and to also get a better look at the light. Through binoculars, Betty saw that the light was actually an object spinning in the air. Barney, if you think that's a satellite or a star, you're being completely ridiculous, Betty told her husband. (laughs) Um, Betty's sister had claimed to have seen a flying saucer a few years prior to this, uh, and Betty began to think that that's what she was seeing. 
Barney started to grow concerned but didn't want to spook Betty, so they quickly got back in the car and continued to drive home. About 70 miles past the diner, the object descended towards them and hovered about 100 feet above their car. Barney stopped in the middle of the highway, grabbed his pistol, and ex exited the vehicle. He walked toward the craft, looking through his binoculars, he claimed to have seen 8 to 11 humanoid figures peering at him through the craft's windows. No, through the windows! Uh, yeah, yeah, so like, they have binoculars in their car, so you know, he, you could take a closer look and yeah. actually see the details of yeah. what it was. Um, so yeah, that would be very creepy. Like, you're in the middle, it's the middle of the night, you're on the highway by yourself, mm -hmm. and there's a craft like hovering above you and you can see people in it or you... people like things yes oh god okay mm. it's gotta feel so isolating at that moment you know like <laughs> yeah yeah i'd be pedal to the metal <laughs> it's freaking go speaking of which barney ran to the car and told <laughs> betty the craft was going to capture them and he sped away <laughs> or at oh, least tried to oh no yeah so uh so he got back in the car and sped away while Betty watched the craft uh, out of the passenger window. They then heard a rhythmic series of beeping and buzzing and lost consciousness. A second series of beeping and buzzing returned them to consciousness and they realized they had traveled about 35 miles down the road and a few hours had passed with little recollection of their drive. Ufologists call this missing time when you can't recall what happened between mm -hmm. like two points of like traveling or whatever. Yeah. And uh, when they got home, they felt dirty and compelled to check their bodies. Their watches stopped working and the clothes they were wearing were damaged. So it's like they got into a scuffle and yeah. didn't even remember it. Yeah, they don't remember anything. Yeah, the like only they thing know. they remember was up until the point they started dry, like speeding away Yeah, and everything. And their clocks stopped or their watches? Yeah, they so just stopped working. Someone stopped on the exact minute that they were abducted. Maybe so. They didn't uh, specify that uh -huh. though. Um, in the days that followed, they reported the incident to the Air Force, but withholding the harder to believe parts as to not be labeled eccentric, but their claims were dismissed, uh, and the Air Force basically said they misidentified Jupiter in the sky. Like, it was just like a bright planet, <laughs> and they thought it was a oh, UFO. Oh, man. Uh, later, Betty ended up contacting NICAP, or I guess NECAP? I don't know how you would pronounce it. It's an anagram or whatever. Oh. Is that what that's called? I think. Uh, it's a civilian UFO research group. Okay. And I should have looked up what the letters stand for, but I okay. forgot to. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so she contacted them, and they interviewed them and believed them, uh, but the Hills still couldn't remember what happened during the missing time. Uh, Betty was plagued with nightmares of the abduction and wanted to remember what happened, and Barney was suffering from anxiety from the incident, and he seemed to want to keep the memories repressed and put it behind him. Mm -hmm. In January of 1964, both Barney and Betty started a series of hypnosis sessions that lasted until June of the same year because they were suffering so much from the anxiety and like stress from, I guess, the incident. They finally decided to kind of see a psychiatrist, which then led them to undergo hypnosis, which was kind of a popular thing at the time. Mm -hmm. So they were hypnotized separately, so neither of them would be influenced by the other. And this is what they recalled during the hypnosis. Ooh. Starting with Barney, under hypnosis, his recollection of events leading up to the abduction were consistent with his conscious recollection. After he ran back to his car, he recalled driving away from the UFO, but had an irresistible urge to drive into the woods, so he did. He saw six men standing in the dirt road and the car stalled. They told him not to fear them. He described the being similar to Betty's uh, hypnotic recollections when she was under hypnosis, so they kind of had the same uh, description of the beings. The beings would stare into his eyes with a mesmerizing, terrifying effect. Barney stated, Oh, those eyes. They're, they're there in my brain. I was told to close my eyes because I saw two eyes coming close to mine and I felt like the eyes had pushed into my eyes. Barney said they were taken to the craft and were separated. He was made to lay on a small exam table. 
He continued to keep his um, eyes closed for most of the exam out of fear. A cup-like device was placed over his genitals, and he believed a sperm sample may have been taken. <laughs> um, the Oh, yeah, so they were also, like, basically undressed and then laid on the exam tables. <clears throat> the beings then scraped his skin and looked in his ears and mouth. A tube was inserted into his anus, he said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get probed. I yeah. guess that's, <laughs> that's a common trope <laughs> with aliens. Oh, gosh. And it was quickly removed. Uh, they felt his spine and seemed to be counting his vertebrae. Uh, they spoke in a mumbling language he could not understand. And when they did communicate with him, it seemed to be through thought transference. Mm. At the end of the exam, they were escorted off the ship and taken to their car. So... That's what he remembered. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like mumbling. And then translation. Don't worry about the thing in your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, like, during this whole time, uh, like, or a few points in it, they just tell him, don't worry, you know, like, uh, don't I guess be afraid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, it's cool. Like, we're going to just, look, we're just going to suction. This like, here. we're doing this against your will, but it's yeah, all look, cool. It's cool. A little sperm there. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Betty's hypno uh, hypnotic recollections were similar to the dream she had after the abduction, with a few differences. But Betty and Barney's uh, hypnotic recollections were consistent with one another's. She was also made to lay on an exam table. They took strands of her hair, nail clippings, and scraped her skin. Each sample was placed on a clear glass-like material. A large needle was inserted into her abdomen, and she started to writhe in pain. But one of the beings waved his hand over her, and the pain stopped. So this all sounds terrifying. Yes. Yeah. Um... After the exam, Betty had a small conversation with one of the beings, asking where they were from. It showed her a map of stars and pointed out where they came from. Later, she would make a drawing of it, though it had uh, many stars, she would just sketch the ones that stood out the most to her. After the hypnosis sessions concluded, the psychiatrist that performed them speculated that Barney's recollection of the abduction may have been a fantasy inspired by Betty's dreams. So, their psychiatrist didn't really believe that it was an actual abduction, mm -hmm. but um, the Hill and the Hills disagreed with this, but believed that the hypnosis helped to alleviate their anxieties, and they went back to living their normal lives without all the stress and all that. So, like, it did, you know, help them, even though yeah. their doctor was kind of dismissive. Yeah. Um, so, they were willing to talk about it with friends and family and the occasional UFO researcher, but did not seek out publicity. So, like... At the time, it didn't seem like they were even trying to seek out fame or attention from it. Mm -hmm. um, in 1966, John G. Fuller contacted the Hills and gained their cooperation to write a book about their experiences called The Interrupted Journey, which includes a copy of the star map Betty sketched. So if you want to get like a more detailed mm -hmm. account of their story or whatever, you can check out that book if you're a reader. Uh, Barney died a few years later at the age of 46 from a cerebral hemorrhage, hemorrhage and Betty became a celebrity in the UFO community. Oh, wow. <laughs> and died of cancer at the age of 85, never remarrying. Dang, that's a long time to go without your husband. I know, and like he like lived just like such a short time yeah. after it, because uh, I think he was 39 when it happened, and then like he died like only a few years later at wow. 46. Dang. Um, there are many who dispute their claims, suggesting it was a shared hallucination from the stress of being an interracial couple, work, and sleep deprivation, but the Hills held their belief uh, their whole lives. I don't understand shared hallucination. Yeah, that like, doesn't it seem sounds like plausible. Yeah, it seems less likely that it'd be a shared hallucination than anything that they're that someone's saying actually happened, you know? Yeah. Like shared hallucination. Like Why would two we people see the, the same, same thing? Yeah. yeah. Obviously, y'all saw something. Yeah. But I don't know. Unless, like, that's a nice way of saying y'all are just feeding off of each other and agreeing with yeah. each other. <laughs> yeah. It's like the... Go on. No, go on. I was just going to say, like, the shared hallucination of Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. 
where Michael oh. Myers and freaking <laughs> Lori Strode are both seeing the mom and the white horse. Yeah. But, Stupid um, movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this makes me not want to take a road trip at night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. I mean, that so many creepy things happen on road trips at night anyway. But yeah. alien abduction, seeing the creatures, they abduct you, you remember it, and freaking hypnosis afterwards. Mm. Yeah, and, like, also, like, during the hypnosis, they had very strong, like, emotional responses. Like, it had to happen over a few sessions because, Mm -hmm. like, at first they were, like, so, like, shooken up and, like, worked up about it that the psychiatrist didn't want to continue until they would calm down a little more and then they'd go deeper Mm -hmm. and have a longer session. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, they were even, like, crying and having, like, emotional outbursts during, like, the first session. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's a good. That's a good one. It's a good abduction story. Um, <laughs> Hope yeah. it doesn't happen. Sorry to that. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to anyone who's been abducted, but you know, makes for a good story. <laughs> um, I have something that I found a theory. Uh, have you ever heard of the theory of the prison planet? I don't think so. Well, I'm going to tell you all about it right after this short commercial break. Are you tired of washing the dishes? Don't have a dishwasher and too poor to afford one? Introducing Demon Wash. All you have to do is create something in your home symbolizing crossroads. Grab a shoebox and place a picture of yourself, some graveyard dirt, and a bone from a black cat or milk from a black cow into the box and close it. Place the box on top of your crossroads and chant the following. I'm not the one who's so far away when I feel the snake bite enter my veins. Never did I want to be here again, and I don't remember why I came. Congratulations, you've just summoned a demon. Tell the demon you'd like a subscription to Demon Wash, fill out a few forms, and voila! You'll never have to worry about doing the dishes again. And all it cost you was your soul. For that, you traded your everlasting soul? Well, I wouldn't use me. Demon Wash, now available wherever you are. Demon Wash is not available for gingers. <sighs> Sorry, I was uh, saving Crystal Weathers from an alien abduction. So, where we left off, Kristen had just told us the story of an abduction of a couple named Peggy and Barney. Now, Josh is going to get into the prison planet theory. Let us know what you think of this theory after the episode is over. Let's get back to it. All right, and we are back right here on off-brand horror. Uh, We had just heard an abduction story from Kristen, and um, I was going to talk about uh, this theory that I found that I found very interesting. Uh, First, I, I did want to go ahead and... Since I personally have a alien or a UFO story, um, I was going to quickly tell that. I get more detailed about it on Terraform Podcast, a show that we did uh, a while back. And I told this story uh, on there, on the Aliens episode. But uh, just for anyone who hasn't heard that, basically when I was about 16, 17 years old, uh, me and a friend of mine were taking a walk around his neighborhood. And... Um, uh, we both turn to the right because we saw like something flying towards us and what looked like uh, a s- flying saucer, like a classic flying saucer, but it had like colorful lights on the outside of it. Oh yeah. One detail I forgot to mention was uh, when they were describing the flying saucer that it did have colorful lights. Like once they got a closer look, they could see like red lights flashing on it. See? Mm. Ooh, it might have been like the same type of aliens that abducted the hills and y'all got lucky. Oh, God. Oh, okay. So <laughs> it comes Maybe flying y'all didn't. down. No, 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 listen. <laughs> it comes flying down and then it stopped on a dime and just, whoop, and it's hovering there. And me and Albert both turned and we're looking at it. Do you have like an estimate of how low it was or any like reference at all? Like. No. Okay, continue. <laughs> I was no just wondering that, how close yeah, it might no. have been. <laughs> so it stops, and it's hovering right there. Stops on a dime, is hovering. 
And I think the only thing that I could get out, I was like, dude. (laughs) And then Albert doesn't say anything. And then it just goes, just takes off just as quick as it stopped. And I'm like, what the crap? And I turn and Albert's already walking away. Like he's like left my side and he's walking. I'm like, dude, what did we just see? And he goes, doesn't matter. No one's going to believe us. And so, and he's held on to that. Because he never talks about it. And he actually tells me now, and this is the interesting part, because I was just, you know, a while ago, I was like, oh, wait. Uh, he says he doesn't even remember seeing it. And he claims that I was probably dreaming, and it was just a realistic dream. And that's why I remember, and he doesn't. And then I had always said, no, it's probably because you were abducted, and they wiped your memory. And then I was thinking the story you just told, they didn't remember it until the hypnosis. So maybe... We need to hypnotize Albert, and he'll remember. Uh, and you used to hypnotize him all the time. You were that close to getting it uh-huh. out of him. To people who think, <laughs> to people who just heard that and went, you used to hypnotize him all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, when I was younger, uh, I was a magician. Um, started doing and magic. That, yeah, that was a technique you were trying out. Yes, I started doing magic tricks in like junior high and I still do them occasionally now to just not nearly as often. I would like go out and do shows and try to get people on the street and stuff like that. But uh hypnotizing, hypnosis and magic tricks go hand in hand, and so I was like looking into hypnosis and I would practice on Albert and it worked on him. I would knock him out, and he loved it. Because he said he was like, he was, like, I'm so relaxed when you freak it. So maybe there is me. something to hypnosis, kind of easy anxieties. Mm-hmm. So, uh, anyways, that that's my UFO story. Mm. And uh, and so, like, people who dispute uh, abductions and well, basically abductions is that it's sleep paralysis, and I know that's something that you have a lot. But I think that's more referring to the times where the aliens enter the home and abduct yeah, you from the home, yeah. so it's a little different than what you've experienced. But People people always, everything, the excuse is sleep paralysis. <laughs> and my uh, argument against that is basically, um, in a way, uh, shared hallucinations. Hmm. Because everyone always sees like similar things like something sitting on your chest uh the smiling man uh all these different sleep paralysis tall monsters tall beings in your room. yeah one time i had sleep paralysis um in the first house that we moved in after we got married and i couldn't move and i bring my eyes over to the closet and i see these three tall beings coming out of the closet and coming towards me and i was freaking out because i couldn't move and then finally i shook out of it but uh strange that a lot of people have the same yeah experience. same exact experience for it to be sleep paralysis like why are we all seeing the same thing maybe it i've said this before but maybe we're just all scared of the same things subconsciously but uh i don't know it strikes me as odd so this theory uh it's very interesting to me um, I'm of gonna the prison planet. Is that what you're saying? Yes, the theory of the prison planet. Um, I'm reading this article from Medium.com. Uh, Renee Rose wrote this article, released it April 23rd, 2020. I'm giving you all those details because I thought the article was well written enough to where I didn't need to go try to find different articles. Like she did a good job of just compacting this into one single article. So, um. From the moment that humans were able to think and ponder, we have wondered about our origin. Where do we come from? Why are we here? A new theory seeks to answer that very question, the theory of the prison planet. As science has developed, new theories have popped up left and right seeking to answer the ultimate question of the origins of mankind. While nearly every culture on the face of the planet has sought to explain our presence on Earth, Science has taken the reins in recent years to develop a possible hypothesis. With this, we get theories such as the ever-popular sim- uh, simulation hypothesis, which is something else I'd like to talk about one day. Recently, the theory of the prison planet has begun to gain traction. Developed by American ecologist Dr. Ellis Silver, 
The prison planet theory states that the origin of humankind is not found here on Earth, but elsewhere. Silver contends that we are not an evolutionary product of this world, but rather visitors that found ourselves on Earth relatively recently in the geographical timescale. Silver goes on to argue that we may have come to Earth anywhere between tens of thousands of years ago to hundreds of thousands of years ago before breeding with earlier developed species such as the Neanderthals, causing us to become the hybrid species that we know as humans today. So to sum that part up, we were quote-unquote aliens from another planet. Or at least half of us. Yes, our, our ancestors, they came down, they found this planet, and uh, we made it with the Neanderthals that were here on Earth, which are basically like cavemen, cavewomen, uh, and then created the humans of today. And like, if you look up like Neanderthals, like they had different shaped skulls and like all this other, you know, stuff and like... It, this would explain a lot because, like, our wisdom teeth that we don't use anymore. They started to, oh, yeah. And, like, all this stuff, that's because we're not Neanderthals. We're something else. We're, we're a crossbreed. Odd that aliens landed here and decided to mate with the... Well, let, let me continue and it will explain. Um, if you're anything like me, this theory seems a bit far-fetched. It should be noted, however, while Silver's theory sounds like the ravings of a madman, <laughs> he is anything but. Rather than being the usual tinfoil hat-wearing enthusiast, Silver is a respected scientist. He even has some evidence to back up his claims. Silver is more than willing to present his findings regarding the prison planet theory. According to Silver, it all starts with the fact that we, as a species, really don't belong here on Earth. As Silver acknowledges, humans are unlike any other species found here on Earth in terms of both mental capacity and intelligence. There is, in fact, no species on Earth that can contend with humankind's ability to create, philosophize, and advance in a technological sense. And that's not Silver's only argument to suggest that humankind originated elsewhere in the universe. Silver also states that humans possess many physiological characteristics that suggest we didn't originally develop here on Earth. In fact, Silver lists a variety of differences between us and nearly every other life form found on Earth. According to Silver, these differences can be observed as early on as the beginning of our lives. The first example Silver offers is the fact that human mothers can experience both complications and pain during natural childbirth that is not witnessed elsewhere in the animal kingdom. While it can be argued that many of these complications may be due to the size of a baby human's head, Silver argues that there is no basis for this to be normal if this is a result of evolutionary progression. So why why do we have complications and I always thought it was strange that we evolved to Right and we haven't have difficult births. Yes, exactly. Uh, Silver also argues that human babies are virtually helpless for years after birth, developing excruciatingly slow when compared to the rest of the animal kingdom. Within the animal kingdom, rather, it is the norm for babies to become fairly self-sufficient in a rapid amount of time. While this may seem like enough to make you raise an eyebrow, there is still much that Silver has to say. Silver goes on to note that as humans age, we display certain anomalous traits that we don't share with other members of the animal kingdom. He cites the fact that we are extraordinarily prone to developing chronic illnesses, that we are weak to the impact of the sun, we are the only species that experiences sunburn, and that the range of frequencies that we can hear is relatively low compared to the rest of the animal kingdom. Ew, this is getting spooky. Mm-hmm. Ooh, we don't belong here. We don't belong here. Silver even goes on to cite the reason that humans are so prone to back issues. <laughs> as being the gravitational difference between Earth and our home world. It's getting interesting. Mm-hmm. 
While there are a number of other interesting differences between the human race and the majority of the animal kingdom that Silver goes on to highlight, it seems that he is of the opinion that our bodies are not well suited for the earthly environment. This is a direct quote from Silver. My thesis proposes that mankind did not evolve from that particular strain of life, native earth organisms, but evolved elsewhere and was transported to earth between 60,000 and 200,000 years ago. Mankind is supposedly the most highly developed species on the planet, yet is surprisingly unsuited and ill-equipped for earth's environment. Harmed by sunlight, a strong dislike for naturally occurring foods, ridiculously high rates of chronic disease, and more. This suggests, to me at least, that mankind may have evolved on a different planet, and we may have been brought here as a highly developed species. The Earth approximately meets our needs as a species, but perhaps not as strongly as whoever brought us here initially thought. But why prison? Like we were outcasts or like the, our ancestors or something? Yes, and that's what we're about to get into. So right now, this is just all proving, quote unquote proving, like giving a hypothesis of some of the things that we go through are because we don't belong here. We do not belong on this, on this planet. <laughs> um, so it says, where is home? So let's say all of this is true. If so, where is home? Where did we come from? Silver has his own theories. According to him, it is a strong possibility that Earth serves as a prison planet for holding prisoners who found themselves incapable of integrating into the normalcy of society. That's why we have such a hard time coexisting with all of our <laughs> people. <laughs> According to Silver, it is highly possible that our ancestors were exiled here on Earth due to their own indiscretions leaving them to be forgotten about before they continuously began breeding with the Neanderthals. So that's why we breeded with the Neanderthals. We were left here because we were put in prison on a prison planet, and then they just forgot about us or left us and was like, we're, we're not worthy to be picked up. So obviously, you know, even that creature had needs. Urges. Needs Urges. is a strong word, I think. <laughs> and started banging the Neanderthals. <laughs> I guess maybe they were similar enough to whatever the... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Created us. Calling it the prison planet theory, Silver remarks on why we all find ourselves here, saying, One reason for this, discussed in the book, is that the Earth might be a prison planet, since, since we seem to be a naturally violent species, and we're here until we learn to behave ourselves. We are naturally violent. Yeah. It's funny. We've even created prisons on our prison planet for the <laughs> extra violent ones. <laughs> Parents, I've been good, haven't I? <laughs> Come get me. <laughs> get me. <laughs> um, Silver further goes on to add some weight to his theory by stating that our ancestors may have had overseers at one time. These overseers became gods in the minds of our ancestors. So this is explaining gods, and it's because all these traditions that have been passed down, uh, you know, all these different religions and stuff, it's all because it was our ancestors that were coming and checking on us, and at that point we Which started to breed. Which I did notice that and, the um, objection that I read was kind of like the accounts in the Bible of when angels came to people because he noted eyes like he was mm. you know like he was really fixated on the eyes that he was seeing and it was like a spinning disc and like uh, you know like one of the angels was like yeah. a spinning yeah like, yes orb of eyes or something i'm gonna put up a depiction i found on reddit of uh like a drawing of what an actual angel looks like yeah Just and they <laughs> and the aliens told him not to fear and they Angels always say, do not oh, fear. And then, like, there was one part I didn't, you know, I didn't want to overload us with detail, but there was one part I didn't mention where um, they were thinking that the reason they were um, examining them was to see how much like them they were. 
like how much like them they were to the aliens. So maybe they were seeing how different they yes, become this from is the, breeding. The, yeah, the breeding. And now they're looking <laughs> and that's why we're getting prodded and all this stuff. They're looking at the differences. Ooh. They're collecting semen. Gross. And like all this stuff. And they're like, they're like, well, look, you know, this is what our ancestors have done. This is what we've become on this planet Earth. Um, so these overseers became gods in the mind of our ancestors. He even suggests that the UFOs that we see today may be our overseers coming back to take a look at us and see how far or how little we have progressed on our prison planet. Making sure we can't fly away and <laughs> try to get back to them. Oh, yeah. Uh, while I'm unsure of how much I can agree with Silver's findings, I have to admit that the prison planet theory is indeed interesting. If you are interested in learning more about the theory, Silver has actually written an entire book on the subject entitled Humans Are Not From Earth, A Scientific <laughs> Evaluation of the Evidence. Give it a read. Um, I'm actually interested in reading that book. I would like to see all the Yeah, that's an interesting that take has. on our origins. It is an interesting take. It's really interesting, and, it, and it's like an explanation to like these uh, alien things that People have seen all these aliens and stuff. And like, okay, and a, a thing you said, I thought about that too. You said uh, they want to make sure we can't get to them. Yeah, because imagine we're f now traveling into space and stuff. Like, what if we found this out? And it's like, if this isn't true, this could be a freaking movie. Like, we're always scared. What if aliens exist? What if they come and they land on the earth and they want to like kill us and all this stuff? Someone should make like a movie where it's the opposite. We're the freaking aliens. We found out y'all abandoned us here because we couldn't live up to the normalcy of society. We find the planet they're on. We go up there and we freaking just destroy them. Like, oh my God. That's where your thoughts go? Yes. We're the freaking beasts. Like we're the violent. We got the violent nature. We go up there banging on our chest and just... <laughs> I was thinking more like, you know what? Maybe we can reconcile with them. Like, you know, show them like... <laughs> Sorry, that's my violent nature. I'm going to be left behind, okay? That's the rapture. When the rapture comes, they're going to take all the people that Are <laughs> have good. moved past their violent outbursts, <laughs> and you're going to go, and I'm going to stay. <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> yes, that, that's a really interesting uh, take. Yeah, it is. But, like, I was kind of thinking, like, with as far as how we kind of struggle to birth and all that, but mm -hmm. we have figured out how to thrive as a species. And like, there's other animals that kind of struggle to survive as an individual, like um, salmon, you know, after they breed, they just start falling apart and dying. Mm -hmm. So it seems like, you know, you could say the same thing about them. They don't really belong here because they can't survive after breeding yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. I am no expert or anything, so that's a very <laughs> small argument. Well, I think that most people are not actually going to believe this theory, but I don't know. I think it holds some weight. It does. I think it was really interesting, and it's like a cool like thought to travel down. Yeah. yeah. We're all in prison. We're all in prison here on and planet here I Earth. thought I was a nice, good person, and really I'm just You're, uh, dregs of society. Mm-hmm. You are the outcome of a Neanderthal and an alien. They could not live. And then what if, like, uh, you know, people, like, the conspiracy theory, like, lizard people, like, all the rich, like, Bezos and all them, what if they're just, like, our, <laughs> they're over, our overlords and they came and they took form, you know? They tried to take form. Zuckerberg has a hard time looking normal. Oh, God. <laughs> Which is, like, ironic because they really seem like villains to us. And yeah, we feel yeah. like, you know, the protagonist, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly. Everybody thinks they're right. That's how it always is. Every villain I've ever freaking heard, like on a movie, always has a good point. <laughs> <laughs> you can understand why yeah. they chose what they chose. Yeah. Like they always have a good point, like freaking uh, on the new Thor Love and Thunder, a spoiler alert, if you haven't seen that, then you may want to Stop skip. listening. Yeah, skip a few. Skip. 30 seconds. Yeah, 30, 30 seconds to a minute ahead. Um, but yeah, Christian Bale is like the god killer. He wants to kill gods because of the fact that the gods never helped him and like his daughter died. And, and then one god actually laughed in his face. Laughed in his face. Which it was supposed to be his god that he worshipped. Yeah, yep. And so he vowed to go kill all the gods. I was like, eh, 
kill them. <laughs> that's what I was just saying. Like, yeah, let's go find these freaking a-holes who left us down here on Earth and let's kill them. <laughs> we don't know what our ancestors did. Yeah, yeah. Well, why are we being freaking uh, punished? Why is my back got to hurt every morning? Because my great, 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 great grandpa killed a guy. All right? <laughs> it's not fair. But um, I am being told that we need to hurry up and get to uh, our weather report. Um, Crystal Weathers has been, you know, giving me evil eyes over there. So, uh, Crystal, uh, go ahead and take it away for us. Thank you, Josh. Sunday will be partly cloudy with a high of 92, and Monday will be the same. And so will Tuesday, and also Wednesday, and so on and so on. Never changing, never ending. Your days will blur together in one unending loop. It will feel like you're living the same day over and over again, but time will pass and you will have accomplished nothing. Saturday will be partly cloudy with a high of 92. That is those week's weather. Back to you. All right, appreciate it, Crystal. Uh, we will be right back right after this commercial break. Have you recently inherited an old doll from a relative? Bought a doll for your child that just doesn't seem right? Does it seem to be moving spots on its own, or worse? Have you thrown it away and it's appeared back in your house? You may be the victim of a haunted doll. Haunted dolls are more common than you may think. Annabelle, Robert the doll, Peggy the doll. These are just a few examples of dolls that want to harm you. Statistics say the more dolls you have in your home, the more likely one of them will kill you. Movies like Child's Play are a part of a government conspiracy to make you think killer dolls only exist in the movies. But now, you know the truth. Haunted dolls are real and they're coming for you. Call us at 858-215-4455 and leave us a voicemail of your experience with haunted dolls. We will listen to it, research it, and reveal what we find on off-brand horror. That's 858-215-4455. 858-215-4455. Call now. And he's biting my ankle. Oh, uh, welcome back to off-brand horror. Um, we are going to look to see if we have any calls. Nope. <laughs> sure don't. Hey, everyone watching and listening, maybe give us a call, you know? We know y'all got some spooky stuff. A reminder of the number, it's 858-215-4455. Give us a call, leave us a voicemail of your scary stories. If you've ever seen an alien, a UFO, we want to hear about that. Uh, so give us a call and let us know. Or if you don't want to hear your own voice on the podcast, then you can uh, send it in writing and we will read it. I wouldn't want to hear my voice. <laughs> Everyone here hears you, though. Uh, send that to offbrandhorror at gmail.com uh, if Google doesn't close my countdown. Um, mm. Sorry, Google is evil. Google are aliens. Just going to say that. Can't stand them. Uh, so... Any scary updates that we have? I don't think so. But something that we did forget to talk about on the last episode that we can cover really quickly. Um, we did watch The Conjuring 2 after the infilled poltergeist episode that Kristen did. Because uh, we wanted to see what they got right and what they added for the effect of the movie. Um I remember the curtain wrapping around the little girl's neck actually happened in the movie. Um, something that they added was she basically teleported from room to room yes yeah the teleportation thing they added that uh if you guys still haven't watched conjuring 2 go watch that oh, pause this and then come yeah. back and then spoiler and then, yeah. alert sorry guys yeah. spoiler alert on but them. the whole it's a pretty old episode movie. yeah it's spoiler. a spoiler alert <laughs> if they've seen the episode then they know the truth um Something that I was actually surprised that the movie got right was all the speculation around, is this real? They oh. kept kept asking it. The whole reason that the Warrens went like on the movie was because Catholic Church was like, well, you think they might be faking it and we can't get involved unless you guys can confirm and it. And they were involved a little less than what I remember from watching it. So they yeah, kind of got yeah. that detail right that they weren't there too yes, much. Yes, because we were like, oh. But it was definitely you, a lot. Oh, yeah. They made the Warrens out to be like the heroes yeah. whenever really they just went and confirmed and then left. Yeah. So they definitely made them the heroes when they weren't real life. But yeah, they had their own side uh, mission going on like dealing with the nun 
and the aftermath of the Amityville horror and stuff like that. So that's how they were involved in the movie while we were just cutting back to the infield poltergeist stuff happening. Um, and then like the crooked man and all that, they added all that in there. Um, but yeah, they got quite a few of the details, right? They had the jumping off the bed. They even said, it looks like she's just jumping when they claimed, you know, like, uh, Janet was levitating. Yeah. So they did throw in the stuff that people actually said against them and all that. Yeah. And then they, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember if there was any, anything else they, that we wanted to bring up. We should have wrote it down. I remember watching and we even said we should write this down. Then we didn't. Then we forgot to talk about it on the last episode. <laughs> we are bad. But uh, I don't know. I enjoyed The Conjuring 2. Um, I would rate it probably a four stars out of five. Oh, really? I still think the first Conjuring was the best of that series. I need to rewatch that one still to refresh. I've seen all of them, but I have to refresh my memory on them. But watching that one again fresh, and especially after, again, go listen to Enfield Poltergeist episode of Off Brand Horror, and then go watch The Conjuring 2. I feel like they went together really well. Like, you told the story, and then going and watching The Conjuring 2 and seeing it unfold with the extra stuff added in, I felt like it was a fun experience. But, yeah. And that may have helped me even boost the rating of what I would have rated it in the past, but I would rate it a solid four out of five stars. I thought it was pretty good, and it held up pretty well. Um, Mm -hmm. I wish they would have did the voice a little different, though. Yeah. It was a little overdone. Yeah. But other than that, it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Four out of five. What would you say? (laughs) Out of five stars. Out of five stars? Um, Yeah, I guess four is pretty good. I wouldn't want to watch it alone. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah it was a creepy movie it was creepy unlike i hated the conjuring three we saw that in theaters with donnie and aaron it was the devil a little made cheesy me do it. yeah they went downhill with that one i did not like the conjuring three i leaned but, uh, way too hard into the love story of yeah, the warrens yeah wise men say oh all right um gotta go see elvis still uh, <laughs> all right well uh we're gonna go ahead and call it uh this was a little bit of a longer episode so uh we will see you guys next week right here on off brand horror see ya bye i'm here to host off brand horror and kick ass and off brand horror just ended that's what i'll be saying to the aliens if they think they can come back down here and boss us around some more Unless, of course, they're bigger and stronger than I am, then I'll worship them, I guess. I just trying to stay alive over here. Point is, got the lights back on. It's the end of the episode. I personally am terrified right now, hoping that I don't get abducted. So, we will see you next week, right here on Off Brand Horror.